The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 Are we living in a false matrix? Who created this world? Is the God most people worship actually Satan? Greetings, mortals. Capital D to all. Welcome back to the Library of Gnosis. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. 1 John 5.19 Scripture makes it clear that the devil, Satan, is currently in charge of planet Earth. Even Jesus Christ himself, shortly before his arrest and crucifixion, acknowledged Satan's authority. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. And he has nothing in me. John 14.30 In Platonic, Neo-Pythagorean, Middle Platonic and Neo-Platonic schools of philosophy, the Demiurge is an artisan-like figure responsible for fashioning and maintaining the physical universe. The word demiurge is an English word derived from demiurgus, a Latinized form of the Greek demiurgos. It was originally a common noun meaning craftsman or artisan, but gradually came to mean producer and eventually creator. The philosophical usage and the proper noun derived from Plato's Timaeus, written 360 BCE, where the Demiurge is presented as the creator of the universe. In the various branches of the Neoplatonic school, 3rd century onwards, the Demiurge is the fashioner of the real, perceptible world, after the model of the ideas. But, in most Neoplatonic systems, it is still not itself the One. In the orc dualistic ideology of the various Gnostic systems, the material world is evil, while the non-material world is good. According to some strains of Gnosticism, the Demiurge is malevolent, as it is linked to the material world. In others, including the teachings of Valentinius, the Demiurge is simply ignorant or misguided. Plato, as the speaker Timaeus, refers to the Demiurge frequently in the Socratic dialogue Timaeus. The main character refers to the Demiurge as the entity who, quote, fashioned and shaped the material world. Timaeus describes the Demiurge as unreservedly benevolent, and so it desires a world as good as possible. Plotinus and the later Platonist work to clarify the Demiurge. To Plotinus, the second emanation represents an uncreated second cause. Plotinus sought to reconcile Aristotle's Energia with Plato's Demiurge. In order to reconcile Aristotelian with Platonian philosophy, Plotinus metaphorically identified the Demiurge mind or nous, 
with the pantheon of the Greek gods as Zeus. The Sumerians believed that until Enlil, also a sky and thunder god, was born, heaven and earth were inseparable. Then Enlil cleaved heaven and earth in two and carried away the earth, while his father Anu carried away the sky. By splitting heaven and earth, he created our false matrix. Remember that Jesus said he would come back not to bring us to heaven, but to bring heaven to earth. Enlil, also known as Yahweh, is a storm and warrior deity. He is the Demiurge, the ruler of our age. The Tablet of Destinies was envisioned as a clay tablet inscribed with cuneiform writing, also impressed with cylinder seals, which, as a permanent legal document, conferred upon the god Enlil his supreme authority as ruler of the universe. Supposedly, whoever possessed the tablet ruled the universe. The Demiurge is both the Grand Archon and an Eon, and as such the Demiurge is split into a type of egregore, a type of thought form, one that is the glue of our material world and the other that is the Aeon. Under the name of Nebro, Rebel, Yaldabaoth is called an angel in the apocryphal Gospel of Judas. He is first mentioned in the cosmos, chaos and the underworld, as one of the twelve angels to come, quote, into being to rule over chaos and the underworld. He comes from heaven. It is said his face flashed with fire and his the parents was defiled with blood. Nebro creates six angels in addition to the angel Saklas to be his assistants. These six, in turn, create another twelve angels, with, quote, each one receiving a portion in the heavens. Satan is described as an angel in the Bible, who used to possess great piety and beauty. According to one Sumerian hymn, Enlil himself was so holy that not even the other gods could look upon him. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Carnelian, chrysolite, and emerald, topax, onyx, and jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise, and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian, cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God and I expelled you, Gordian Serum, 
from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. Ezekiel 28, 12 to 28, 17. But Satan rebelled against God, who nevertheless allows him temporary power over the fallen world and a host of demons. In Judaism, Satan is typically regarded as a metaphor for the Yetzahara or evil inclination, or as an agent subservient to God. In Hinduism, they believe every human has an ego, and then a higher self. The Demiurge emanated a shadow. This shadow became the Grand Archon, a thought form given artificial life. From this thought form emanated the Archons, who themselves are also artificial intelligence, without creativity, empathy, and love. Enlil, as a god, is associated with wind, air, earth, and storms. Satan is also described as the prince of the power of the air. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Ephesians 2.1 the air in the Bible is always taken to mean that part of heaven that is nearest to us and that surrounds us and, as it were, hems us in. In other words, between us and heaven is the arena of Satan. Enlil was a warrior deity. And as such, there has been war on our hearts for thousands of years. Suffering and the archons or demons feed on suffering. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he was God. In the Apocryphon of John, the Demiurge errantly declares that he has made the world by himself. Now the Archon, ruler, who is weak, has three names. The first name is Yaldabaoth, the second is Suclus or Fool, and the third is Samael. He is impious in his arrogance, which is in him. For he said, I am God, and there is no other God beside me. For he is ignorant of his strength, the place from which he had come. The first and highest aspect of God is described by Plato as the One, the Source or the monad. This is the god above the demiurge, and manifests through the actions of the demiurge. The monad emanated the demiurge, or nous, consciousness, from its intermediate vitality due to the monad being so abundant that it overflowed back onto itself, causing self-reflection. This self-reflection of the immediate vitality was referred to by Plotinius as the Demiurge or 
creator. The second principle is organization and its reflection of the non-sentient force or dynamis, also called the One or the Monad. The dyad is energia emanated by the One that is. Then the work, process or activity called nals, the demiurge, mind consciousness that organizes the intermediate vitality into the experience called the material world, universe, cosmos. Plotinus also elucidates the equation of matter with nothing or non-being in the Aeneid, which more correctly is to express the concept of idealism or that there is not anything or anywhere outside of the mind. Plotinus' form of platonic idealism now has the contemplative faculty, ergon, within man, which orders the force, dynamis, into conscious reality. Gnosticism presents a distinction between the highest, unknowable God or supreme being and the demiurge creator of the material world. Several systems of Gnostic thought present the demiurge as antagonistic to the will of the Supreme Being. His act of creation occurs in an unconscious semblance of the divine model and thus is fundamentally flawed, or else is formed with the malevolent intention of trapping aspects of the divine in materiality. Thus, in such system, the demiurge acts as a solution to, or at least possibly, the problem or cause that given gives rise to the problem of evil. One Gnostic Missus describes the declination of aspects of the divine into human form. Sophia, the personification of wisdom, is the Demiurge's mother and partial aspect of the divine pleroma or fullness. Desired to create something apart from the divine totality without the receipt of divine assent. In this act of separate creation, she gave birth to the monstrous Demiurge, and, being ashamed of her deed, wrapped him in a cloud and created a throne for him within it. The Demiurge, isolated, did not behold his mother nor anyone else, and concluded that only he existed ignorant of the superior levels of reality. The Demiurge, having received a portion of power from his mother, sets about a work of creation in unconscious imitation of the superior pleromatic realm. He frames the seven heavens, as well as all material and animal things according to forms furnished by his mother. Working, however blindly and ignorant of the existence of the mother who is the source of all his energy, he is blind to all that is spiritual, but he is king over the other two provinces. The Demiurgus properly describes his relation to the material world. He is the father of that which is animal like himself. Thus, Sophia's power became enclosed within the material forms of humanity, themselves entrapped within the material universe. The goal of Gnostic movements was typically the awakening of this spark, which permitted a return by the subject to the superior, non-material realities which were its primal source. He is Demiurge and maker of man, 
but as a ray of light from above enters the body of man and gives him a soul, Yalabath is filled with envy. He tries to limit man's knowledge by forbidding him the fruit of knowledge in paradise. At the consumption of all things, all light will return to the Pleroma. But Yalda Beoth, the Demiurge, with the material world, will be cast into the lower depths. I have explored the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the Garden of Eden previously in my video on the serpent and the tree of life. But for new listeners, I will shortly recap. Enlil is Yahweh in the Garden of Eden. Yaldabaoth, as mentioned before. Both are storm and warrior deities. Enki is the god of knowledge. And also so happened to be symbolized by a snake or a dragon. He was the serpent that gave Adam and Eve noses in the Garden of Eden. The knowledge of good and evil, so they could become like gods themselves. Also known as theosis or deification. In Pista Sophia, Yaldabaos has already sung from his high estate and resides in chaos, where his 49 demons, he tortures wicked souls in boiling rivers of pitch and with other punishments. He is an archon with the face of a lion, half flame and half darkness. Samael literally means blind god or god of the blind in Hebrew. This being is considered not only blind or ignorant of its own origin, but may, in addition, be evil. Its name is also found in Judaism as the angel of death and in Christian demonology. This link to Judo-Christian tradition leads to a further comparison with Satan. Another alternative title for the Demiurge is Saklas, Aramaic for fool. The angelic name Ariel, meaning the Lion of God in Hebrew, has also been used to refer to the Demiurge and is called his quote perfect name in some Gnostic lore. Ariel has been called an ancient or original name of Yaldaba. The name has also been inscribed on amulets as Ariel Yaldaba. And the figure of the Archon inscribed with Ariel. Satan is described by three animals the serpent, the dragon, and the lion. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversity, the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings or experienced by your brotherhood in the world. 1 Peter 5, 8, 9 According to Marcion, the title God was given to the Demiurge, who was to be sharply distinguished from the higher good God. The former was Diakos, severely just, the latter Agathos, or loving kind. The former was the god of this world, the god of the Old Testament, the later, the later the true god of the New Testament. 
Christ, in reality, is the Son of the Good God. The true believer in Christ entered into God's kingdom. The unbeliever remained forever a slave of the Demiurge. In Sumerian mythology, Anu is the divine personification of the sky, supreme god and ancestor of all deities in ancient Mesopotamian religion. Anu was believed to be the supreme source of all authority for the other gods and for all mortal rulers. And he is described in one text as the one who, quote, contains the entire universe. He is identified with the North Ecliptic Pole centered in the constellation of Draco. And, along with his sons, Enlil and Enki, constitutes the highest divine triad, personifying the three bands of constellation of the vault of the sky. By the time of the earliest written records, Anu was rarely worshipped, and veneration was instead devoted to his son, Enlil. But throughout Mesopotamian history, the highest deity in the pantheon was always said to possess the Anutu, meaning heavenly power. This would then be the god above gods. Enki is his son, the serpent. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. John 3, 14, 15 in creating this world out of chaos, the Demiurge was unconsciously influenced for good, and the universe, to the surprise of even its maker, became almost perfect. The Demiurge regretted even its slight imperfection, and as he thought himself the supreme god, he attempted to remedy by sending a messiah. To this Messiah, however, was actually united with Jesus, the Savior who redeemed men. Opinions on the devil and his relationship to the Demiurge varied. The Ophites held that he and his demons constantly oppose and thwart the human race. As it was on their account, the devil was cast down into this world. According to one variant of the Valentinian system, the Demiurge is also the maker, out of the appropriate substance, of an order of spiritual beings, the devil, the prince of this world, and his angels. But the devil, as being a spirit of wickedness, is able to recognize the higher spiritual world, of which his maker, the Demiurge, who is only animal, has no real knowledge. The devil resides in the lower world, of which he is the prince, the demiurge in the heavens, his mother Sophia in the middle region, above the heavens and below the Pleroma. Gnosticism attributed falsehood or evil to the concept of the Demiurge or Creator. Though in some Gnostic traditions the Creator is from a fallen, ignorant or lesser rather than evil perspective, such as of Valentinius. Pleroma, Greek, fullness, refers to the totality of God's power. The Pleroma is the center of divine life, a region of light above the term is not to be understood spatially, our world, occupied by spiritual beings such as aeons, eternal beings, and sometimes archons. 
Jesus is interpreted as an intermediate aeon who was sent from the Paroma with whose aid humanity can recover the lost knowledge of the divine origins of humanity. The term is thus a central element of Gnostic cosmology. Sophia, emanating without her partner, resulted in the production of the Demiurge, Greek for public builder, who is also referred to as Yalda Bea, and variations thereof in some Gnostic texts. This creature is concealed outside the Pleroma, in isolation, thinking itself alone. It creates materiality and host of co-actors referred to as Orchons. The Demiurge is responsible for the creation of mankind, trapping elements of the Pleroma stolen from Sophia inside human bodies. In response, the Godhead emanates two saber eons, Christ and the Holy Spirit. Christ then embodies itself in the form of Jesus, in order to be able to teach man how to achieve Gnosis, by which they may return to the Pleroma. As you can see, it is hard to tell what exactly the Demiurge is, or what his motives are. I've tried to briefly cover the different viewpoints, so you can decide for yourself with what resonates for you. So, what do you think, dear listener? Are we ruled over by the evil one? Is the ruler of our universe actually Satan? Thank you for listening. See you next time, mortal. Remember to hit that bell button to stay notified. Subscribe for more, give it a like if you enjoyed it, and please feel free to share it. If you want to support my work, you can find me on Patreon at Library of Gnosis. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and BitChute Shoot at Library of Gnosis. The audio versions of my broadcasts are available on Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast at Library of Gnosis. Music is produced by Coda from Coda.music.